So do we see other things on the screen? Yes, we do. So suppose during my regular uh, game development everyday life, uh, I'm doing stuff like I've got a screenshot. I've installed Photoshop recently, and I want to look at a screenshot of the game. Someone reported a problem or something. So I double click on the thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's about seven seconds before I can actually see the image. Right? And I, I'm a very sad person because I installed Photoshop, which for some reason was presumptuous enough to make it be the default handler for this image type, and I have to go like change that, and I grumble to myself and stuff. Um, so that's really slow, and I'm going to talk about that for a bit. Um, but there's an element of severe irony to this, which is that as soon as I double-click this thing, but within one second, it draws an image, right? And it's a pretty high resolution, interesting image. It's just not the image that I care about, right? So obviously, it's not hard to like start a process and draw an image on the screen in much less than seven seconds or eight seconds or whatever I counted. Um, they just don't manage that. Now, I gave a speech a year ago uh, that started the same way, where I was like, oh, I'm so disgruntled about Photoshop starting up slow. Of course, that was 2016. It's now 2017, and a new version of Photoshop has come out. And of course, with what will align directly with my point in the next few slides, they've made it worse, right? And the, the great way in which they've made it worse is, say there's some operation that you maybe want to do once in a while, like create a new image, right? So I'm going to go to File, New, Ugh, right? And that menu takes, it probably takes about a second. It's hard for me to count one second, but it takes about a second to come up. And you might think like, oh, well, you know, it was just all these assets were cold or something. Maybe they come off the hard drive. It'll be faster next time. And it's like, well, let's test that out. Nope. Like every time I'll use the keyboard shortcuts, file new. Yeah. See how fast I can type it versus how, ah, uh, right? Imagine if the people who programmed this were trying to make VR games, like everybody would be vomiting everywhere all the time. <laughs> so, uh, well, what, what machine am I running on this is on? It's actually a pretty fast machine. It's a razor blade laptop with a pretty high-end i7 in it. Uh, and, you know, you can talk about how fast the CPU is or the GPU is in some arbitrary measurement. And I'm going to make some, I'm, I'm going to discuss CPU speeds here. And I would just want to say in advance that none of what I'm about to say is very meant to be precise numbers or precise measurements, I'm making a general point, right? And the general point is that the CPU of this thing uh, would have been approximately the fastest computer in the world when I was in college. Um, or, you know, the GPU would have been the fastest computer in the world in the year 2000 or thereabouts. Um, now, you might say, that's a really long time ago. This is the ancient Stone Age. And it's like, well, actually, Photoshop was released in 1990 before either of those dates. And Photoshop 6, which I used heavily during my earlier days in game development, is from the year 2000. And this is what it looks like. This is a screenshot of Photoshop 6. It's got all the same UI that Photoshop has today. It's got all these same control widgets, and it's got like our layers and channels and all that stuff, right? Uh, today, the UI is a different color, but apart from that, it's essentially the same program. Uh, now, I don't doubt that it has many more features, but you have to ask like, what, how many more features are there and what level of slowdown uh, does that justify, right? Um, and like I said, you know, well, it was a long time ago, but you also have to keep in mind, even though 2000 seems like 17 years ago, we already had 3D games that look like this, multiplayer uh, hardware accelerated action games like the year before that, right? So games were here. Uh, so it's not like the Stone Age when you could only draw like EGA pixels on the screen or something. This is relatively recent in terms of modern computers. In fact, I would even say that computers have not unless you count like the mobile form factor or something, the way that we do things has not changed fundamentally since this time. So let's talk about how much faster computers have gotten. Uh, here's a graph. Uh, it's, it's spec FP, floating point performance, which is not necessarily completely relevant to application startup, but this is the graph that I found on Google Images, and we're making a general point here. So today we're on the upper right of this graph, where, uh, you know, this is a logarith logarithmic graph, so we're somewhere between 32 and 64, let's call it 48. Uh, and if we're comparing to the year 2000, when Photoshop 6 came out, we're probably around 2. So uh, 48 divided by 2 is 24. So Single-threaded performance has gotten about 24 times faster since then. This laptop has core, four cores, though, or eight if you count the hyperthreads. So 
Photoshop should be uh, somewhere between 24 times and 192 times faster than essentially the same program was 17 years ago, right? Or if you say, hey, we should be able to utilize a GPU somehow. I don't exactly know how you use that for application startup, but I don't know why the application startup is so much work in the first place. So we could wonder about that for a while. But if you said we should be able to use the GPU, which is a monster machine, right? We should actually be able to get way more than 192x, right? And of course, this is all a simplification of ignoring RAM and, and hard drive speeds. This is an SSD, in case anyone is wondering. It's a fast SSD, but yeah. Now, the, my whole point is that it's not just Photoshop that has this problem. All modern software has this problem, right? Compilers are all really slow. Text editors are really slow. Operating system UIs, all the little windows that pop up are frustratingly slow often. Websites are really, really, really slow. Everything is slow. Signs are slow. So this cool sign over here like scrolls from right to left before, um, before every presentation. I don't know how many of you noticed, but it drops frames sometimes. And sometimes <laughs> it stops and stutters like for half a second, like the garbage collector hit it or something, right? <laughs> Why? There's not that many pixels here. I could probably count all the pixels in the time it'll take to give this talk. So what? I couldn't ask for a better proof to underline my point. So this is not exactly a new point, right? There's been this uh, wisecrack in technical circles for at least as long as I've been around. Uh, and it's called Andy giveth and Bill taketh away. So on the left here is Andy Grove from Intel. And the idea is Intel keeps making faster and faster chips. And then Bill on the right makes slower and slower software and they balance out, right? And over time, the experience stays about the same. And you know, this wisecrack is from the 90s probably uh, and it's still true. Uh, which is probably pretty amazing. Maybe it's from the 2000s. I don't know. Something. Um, now, the problem is if you ask Andy, Andy, what have you done for me lately? Uh, the answer is not really so much, right? So the amount that Andy giveth is decreasing over time. Um, here's a graph where uh, this is, again, a logarithmic, logarithmic graph. Uh, these triangles, orange, on the top are the transistor count. And according to Moore's law, the transistor count just keeps going up, right? But the blue and the green are... Uh, performance-related numbers, right? So the blue is single-thread performance. It's an integer this time because it's a different graph. Um, and then clock frequency is in green. You can see that that's basically completely flattened, right? So um, it's just to say that this is the trend over time. We can't really expect computers to be uh, increasing in speed as fast as they used to. And we know that, right? Um, most of us in this room are, are familiar with this idea. But I've never paired that quite so directly with the issue of software getting slower. I'm not sure how strong the causative link is between these two things. Like, obviously, if the hardware is so much faster, that allows software to be slower. But like, does software have some kind of independent inertia where once CPUs really stop getting fast, software is just going to keep going, right? And just get slower and slower until it's completely intolerable. I'm not sure. Um, because I'm not sure that most programmers even know what makes things slow anymore, right? <laughs> 